the commissioner, Gordon. Hey, Gordon. How you doing, Miss Sophia? I'm good. How you doing? I'm doing great. Gordon has a podcast, The Commissioner's Conversation. Yes, indeed. And when did you start that podcast? I started it in probably around July. It was right during the middle of quarantine. Quarantine mm. happened. You had to find something to do. Well, it was actually to the suggestion of my son. My, oh, what? My son looked at me and said, because he, he had been trying to get me to do a podcast for mm -hmm. a while. So he said, finally, you got time because you always been ripping and running. Now you got time to start that podcast. And I said, you know what? You're right. Yeah, son, your son like, Daddy, you sitting your ass in here, you need a job. <laughs> <laughs> you got to create your own job. Don't do your podcast, Daddy. But, you know, I listen to your podcast, and you talk about everything just like we talk about everything. You talk right. about sports, you talk about politics, you talk about entertainment, you talk about it all. I said, let me get Gordon in here, honey, because Gordon talk about the same stuff we talk about. Exactly. And then I was watching your podcast the other night, and you was talking about, the, uh, what is it, the... NBA, the playoffs, they're doing something different this year where, like, usually they have, like, the top eight right. in every division. But now number eight is going to play number seven, and then number nine is going to play number ten. Yeah, they're having a the play-in tournament. So, mm. basically, like you just said, they, they're taking the top six, mm -hmm. and then seven plays eight to see who actually gets the seven spot. Mm -hmm. And then nine plays ten. And then the winner of nine and ten plays the, the loser, loser of seven, seven and eight, and eight. Uh -huh. for the final spot. So it's a lot of teams that before the season started thought it was some some mess and thought it was stupid, but now they're looking like I need that play in tournament. No, it's it's really a mess. It's really well, it's mess money. because because yeah, it's money, but they looking at it as money. But it is mess because usually it's the top eight. So now it's just like just because you the seventh and eighth seed don't mean you in number ten, number nine, and ten could come and take your spot. Just like that. <laughs> so they just found a boy a, a way to make some more money, honey. Make it, keep it intriguing. And you explained it so well, and it was so easy when I heard you say it. You said, like, "What? You said they having that play in tournament? What? What is that?" You said. <laughs> <laughs> well, what it happened is number seven plays number eight, and the winner out of seven and eight, they are the number seven seed. Right. And then number eight, nine plays number ten, and the winner out of number ten and nine goes to play the loser out of seven and eight, and then that winner would be the eight seed. I was like, oh, okay, yeah, it is. But, I mean, they keep finding stuff to complain about. Like last year was the bubble. Nobody wanted to be in the bubble. Everybody got tired of being stuck in Disney World, not being able to do anything. You know, NBA players, they used to having the, the groupies around, so. Mm. Oh, that's what it was. <laughs> See, I knew you would bring it out. I knew you would bring it out. That's what it was. See, we ain't thought about that, honey. Yeah. They couldn't get to them groupies, but that was good for them, honey, because you don't have to worry about them lawsuits coming up later on. But, <laughs> well, <laughs> we'll get to that one a little later, because <laughs> that's the, the NFL. We got to show Watson who's out here and – it seems like he getting a massage from everybody who got a license, or even if you don't have a license. Yes, that's my quarterback, though. You're going you're gonna to tread lightly on Deshaun Watts, but he and his lawyer, they're fighting back because they say if you were so distraught and you so just, you know, it just messed up your life, then why did you schedule another appointment for you to do another massage? You schedule another appointment. You, not only that, you were willing to say, I'm taking... Give me a hundred thousand dollars, and I just won't tell nobody. Right. If you were distraught, you go to the police. Mm -hmm. That's what I mean. That's what a normal person would do. If if somebody did something wrong to you, and you felt so violated, what the little girl got up there and she cried and started talking about how her life had changed and yeah. everything, and she put she put on the she put on the tears and everything. She couldn't mm -hmm. go to sleep. But she didn't go to the police. Right. And my thing about that is when people like that, you know, you have to take everybody seriously because you don't know you weren't there and you have to take everybody seriously. But the thing about it is I just I just hate when these people come forward and they know they lying and then we taking them serious and then you find out they're lying. So they end up hurting the real victims right. that suffer from sexual assault and sexual abuse and all that stuff. And that's the, that's the big issue because nine times out of ten, Okay, 22 people, and I think that's his lawyer's defense is 22 people, we can find somebody who just jumped in just to say, I want some money. Mm -hmm. But that one person can take down the whole community. So if he did do it, you're, you're looking at everybody else as if they're lying because you found out that this one person was a liar. Mm -hmm. And that actually does hurt uh, the victims of uh, sexual abuse. And it was hard for me to believe because it's just like I, I follow 
uh, Deshaun Watson. I followed his career when he was in college and then when he got drafted and then just to see his parents, just to see his parents. And you just know his parents didn't raise no son like that. Right. And then he has been in the NFL for how many years? He's never been in no trouble, nothing like that. They're He's been the a model sudden, citizen. Of- yes. Then he had come. But then it's just like on the flip side of that, I say, well, we felt the same way when all these allegations came out about Tiger Woods. Right. But we didn't think Tiger Woods was that type of person, honey. But then it's just like, oh, my God, Tiger. Well, the thing about Deshaun Watson, too, was it also came at a time where he's demanding a trade right. from the team where he said he doesn't want to be affiliated because the owner had basically aligned himself with Trump. Mm. And so now that you kick up all this dust, all of a sudden out the woodwork, 22 exactly. women talking about, You've sexually assaulted them in the massage. So you think it's a setup? It's kind sounds of a setup. like it. I mean, mm-hmm. I, I won't say it's a setup until the, the trial, but it sounds a little fishy. And not only that, he's still a high demand player. So if he get traded somewhere, they're gonna have to pay him. Right. So they're in. They hurting him. Even if these allegations are not true, they're still hurling him financially because a lot of people are like, well, you got these allegations. We're gonna take a chance on you, but we're gonna be able to pay you top dollar. And NFL players getting so much mess that what winds up happening is the NFL has to conduct their own investigation. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're doing now. I think they're trying to reach out to a lot of the victims. They're trying to reach out to a lot of the other massage therapists who've come out and basically said, I've worked with him, and he didn't do none of this stuff to me. Right. Or there was one young lady who said um, that the one uh, masseuse was complaining about he wanted a towel. He didn't want the little drape over him. He wanted a towel. Mm -hmm. It was one lady who said, I told him, that he should start using a towel because he didn't like the drape. Mm -hmm. So she's screaming that it's making her uncomfortable. This other lady said, they taught us this in school. Right. To give them the towel. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there... But it was a whole whole lot. When when the first one came out, and she lost me when she said, when she answered the door, and he told her that he wanted such and such and such, and she was like, well, no, I don't do that. That was the time for you to close the door and say, oh, you, it's so no, you can't come in here. And then you're doing this at your house? Right. So if somebody come to your house and then you answer the door and he tell you that he want A, B, C, D, and you say, I don't do A, B, C, D, and uh, you can't come in here. But you let him in and you go on through with the session. And there was another one. There was another one who basically said um, he got naked and he started thrusting and all this stuff that he was doing. And she said she felt uncomfortable. But then... She gave him another massage for forty five more minutes. I'm like, wh- what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they just they just put holes in their own cases. Yeah, right? the more you talk, the more you see that it might not be all that they say that it is. Mm-hmm. But like you said, one person, if one person was actually a victim, then mm-hmm. that one person needs to get his justice. But if you have other people who are just coming in piling on, they need to just be be ushered out the door. Mm-hmm. But see, that's what that's what happened when y'all sign in on these group uh, lawsuits. You want to be a part of a group, and then it's just like this whole situation with these lawyers in the uh, uh, the case that just happened, and then they found that police officer guilt. Those police officers said, "No, we want our own trial. We right. don't want to go as a group. We want our own trial." Say, so, "Okay, all right. Well, that's what we're gonna do. Y'all all get your own George Floyd trial, honey." But now I'm wish I'm though they like, "Ooh, ooh <laughs> guilty, guilty, guilty." I don't know about this, huh? right? So y'all check on them because I'm sure they probably in themselves trying to figure out a way how to. Yeah. Well, uh, for them, you had one guy who sat behind Chauvin and didn't do a doggone thing. Right. Two. Really? Yeah. He didn't do a thing. He didn't say, hey, man, you know, tap him on his shoulder. Uh, You've been on his neck for nine minutes. Because at least one of them said, do you think we should turn him on his side? No, we're going to leave him like this. So, yeah, you, there's no, there's. There's no real defense for them. Only thing they can do is try not to get hit with murder themselves mm. or be an accomplice of murder. Right. So. But we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this. I told you, he talked about everything. We talk about politics, religion, sports. He talked about everything we talk about except, I think, drag queens. I'm your girl, Miss <laughs> Sophia, holding down right here. We are you radio. We are you radio with the home of the urban sound of pride. We in here with the commissioner. Are you tired of sitting on the couch and not sure what to do? Or are you looking for a career change? Ever thought about having a career in medical billing and coding? Look no further. iCode Academy is here to help. iCode Academy's 16-week training and exam preparation course can provide you with the coding knowledge and real-world skills employers are looking for. 
complete the course and you can earn up to $60,000 annually, all while working from home. Learn more. Call iCode Academy at 1-866-553-2928. Or visit us online at www.icodeacademy.org to register and become a certified medical billing and coding specialist today. iCode Academy. Call now. 1-866-553-2928. A licensed and educational partner of the AAPC. Welcome back to Club Chit Chat with your DJ, Miss Sophia, right here on We Are Your Radio. We Are Your Radio. We're the home of the urban style of pride, baby. And I got the commissioner. Yes, the commissioner, Gordon, from the Commissioner's Conversation, his podcast, The Commissioner's Conversation. Yes, indeed. Yes, he's in the building today. I used to work with Gordon at that other radio station, <laughs> We Shall Not Name, honey. Is it still around? It's still around. Oh, it's it still, is. They're hanging on. Hadn't heard nothing from him lately, honey. <laughs> I was just wondering, honey. But uh, we were just listening to body yada, 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 yada about Megan Thee Stallion and then you know Cardi B she has WAP Megan Thee Stallion Cardi B they perform that song you know at the uh, Grammy and one of the senators he done you know talked about you know they are helping the uh, decline of uh, these, these United States and our morals and values and all that stuff. It's like, child, you ain't even watched the Grammy, so what is you even talking about? A lot of times old folks can't get out their own way. Mm. I mean and I'm I'm 40 and I have conversations with my 40-year-old friends, and we talk about music, and I'm like, y'all old. I mean, and maybe maybe it's because I have kids who are, you know, they're coming into teenage years. My son is 13, my daughter's 11, and my son is a DJ, and I listen to the music. I play some old school, he'll play some new school, and we go back and forth. And I understand, like, I can listen to, I don't understand what they talking. I said, you old. But that was my question. That was my question to you. It's just like, you know, you have kids, you have teenagers. So how is it that you all, how do y'all work through this new music? And it's just like the music of their generation. I let them be them. It's, it's their music. Like you said, I remember the same thing. My mother did the same thing with me with hip hop. When Ice Cube and N.W.A. and Public Enemy on up to Jay-Z and all these other people. She didn't try to shelter it. She didn't try to hide it. She just allowed me to listen to the music, and she told me, and she allowed me to see that a lot of times some of these artists, they're not really living like they say they're living. It, right. You have to kind of look at it like a movie. How we, would, we were talking during the break about Justice League and the, all, the, all the stuff that's happening. You can't see an actor and think he's Superman. Mm. So why would I expect Lil Baby to be pulling out a gun and shooting everybody in the club? It won't. It's, it just don't happen. They sell the story. They good at selling. Right. That. Yeah. So they sell that story, honey. Little baby, little Nas X. They really mad at little Nas X right now. <laughs> baby, they better leave my sister alone. I done told them, honey, leave my sister alone, baby. She done came out and she done told y'all she with us, and y'all know how we are. We ride or die with our sisters. That dog on pair of shoes. <laughs> <laughs> And with every, a drop of blood. Everybody was so mad because they thought it was Nike putting them out. And I was telling everybody, like, look, it's... But it's, they had that Nike logo on there. Well, they knew better than that. Why did they do that? But the resale market, that's the tennis shoe game right now. It's the resale market. So what's happening now is you have people buying shoes. And I could either buy a shoe and keep it the same way because it's rare. I can turn around over here and buy it for $150. And as soon as Nike tell you don't have any more, I can sell it to you for $500. Right. But... or. What some people are doing is they're customizing the shoe. So I can buy a pair of Nikes today, uh, stitch Commissioner Gordon on the side and put my picture on the back and on the tongue of the logo. It still says Nike. It still has the, all the stuff that the Nike shoe had, but now it has my name and picture on it. I can put it on eBay, YouTube. I can sell it. for five. If, if I got fans that's willing to buy the shoe for $1,000, mm -hmm. Nike can't do a thing about but it. But these are shoes that they they... They made these shoes and they put that emblem on them. These are not like Nike shoes. Did right. They have Nike. Did they go buy these Nike? They went and shoes? bought the shoe. Oh, and then, then they, they added. It up. They added the stuff to it. Oh. So it just okay. customized the shoe. Okay. Yeah. See, that's why I was my confusion. I'm so glad you hear the commissioner, <laughs> the commissioner, because I was wondering. I was like, well, how would they? Why would they just go get this Nike logo and try to sell these shoes like they Nike shoes, and no, thinking Nike not gonna come after them? But they were really Nike. They were shoes, really Nike. They just upgraded. Basically. Mm. Yeah. Oh. But what, what <laughs> they, they didn't. The what they didn't say too though, and I don't know if you saw it. They had. Just like they had the six 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 on the side and all the little drop of blood, yeah. They had a Jesus Christ shoe that they dropped probably a, a month or two before. And nobody, nobody that. said a word. 
But, but see, it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't a famous singer. It wasn't. It wasn't publicized. It was just whoever was fo- was following the uh-huh. guy that does the customized shoes. Uh huh. His following saw it. His following knew it, and they bought them. So now that you said that, that 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 now I'm serious. I know people think I'm playing and I'm laughing, I'm joking and all of that. But now that you said that, I have seen videos on YouTube and Instagram and Facebook where people have these Nike shoes and they are taking the stitching, right? They, they unstitching and stuff, and then they go to paint and yep. drawing all kind of stuff. So that's what they're doing. That's exactly what they're, they're just doing. Taking the Nike shoes and they're just customizing them. And folks are getting famous off just doing that, right? So and now you can't get no money from it. So now they that, uh, there you go. Because the thing that I was wondering when I saw that that they said because they said that they only made you know like six hundred and sixty six pairs right. six 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 the devil number they only make six hundred and sixty six pairs and they sold out you know real fast and then it was like well now the people have to sell these shoes back they they say that they can't sell these shoes like they already sold these shoes so then it's like (laughs) the people have to return the shoes i said baby do you think these people are getting ready to return these shoes and they know that these shoes have more value now that you all have filed this lawsuit against them they're not going to return these shoes they said well anything happened to the shoes then we're not nike is not responsible then this company they're like girl we don't care about that we just want our shoes and that's all nike's responsibility is to do is to just say that's not our shoe. Well, that is our shoe, but it's been customized. Mm-hmm. And anything beyond us, the, the retail sale, mm-hmm. we don't have anything to do with it. That's all they can do. Right. But you can't, like you just said, you can't expect somebody to re- return a shoe just because it says something that you don't like. Yes. And it's just like, try. This, this, <laughs> these are, <laughs> now y'all have made them more valuable. Right. Y'all have made the shoes more valuable and more popular. So if, but they said they're going to do, they only doing the 666. Well, we talked about hip hop earlier and we were talking about this, the music. That was the same thing that happened in like the early 90s, late 80s, early 90s, when they started talking about how NWA was so violent and talking about the police. Mm-hmm. The minute you, you say something about it, that's when everybody want to see it. That's when everybody want to hear it. So that's when the sales go up. Right. Same thing happened with the shoe. And then now that you're talking about that, we're going to take a break. And we're going to come back and pick up where we left off right here because you're talking about all the police violence that they were talking about. Right. And then it's just like, look what's going on now. And Still they, to they, this day. They were warning us. <laughs> they were telling us day. what was going on. And then somebody made a valid point. You know, hopefully I can remember when we come back, I'm going to just hold that valid point that somebody made. And I was like, oh, my God, I hadn't thought about it like that. But uh, we're going to talk about that when we come back. I'm your girl, Ms. Sophia. Hold it down right here on We Are Your Radio. Hang it out with Commissioner Gordon right here at Club Chit Chat. Come on, baby. Let's ride. Hey. Woo. Hey. Hey. Say it, y'all. Hey. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> you done put it down for three or four minutes. Honey. Let me have a little time. You know what I'm saying, Gordon? I hear you. I'm here with the commissioner. Yes, the commissioner. Gordon, he has a podcast, The Commissioner Conversation. And maybe he talk about everything like we talk about politics, sports, entertainment, you name it. Gordon talks about it, honey, the commissioner. Definitely. And he was telling us a story earlier about he was had his T-shirt and his hat on. This lady said, oh, you the commissioner? <laughs> he was like, yes. And the lady went to talk about politics. He's like, hold on, baby. I'm not that commissioner. Yeah. No. But before we went to the last break, I was telling you I was going to tell you the story about, you know, somebody what somebody had told me. I had heard somebody say it on CNN. And we were talking about the George Floyd situation and the black and white, you know, police officers and the uh, black victims and stuff. And this person said, y'all know policing was started when they ended slavery. Right. This was just a new way to police the black people, will have control of the black people. And to this day, they say that the policing is, you know, still against black people. And that's why uh, the violence against black people and white police officers is so high with blacks is because that's what it was originally for, to keep black people, you know, under control. Right. The, um... I can't think of the actor's name, but he did the Nat Turner story. Mm-hmm. He was on a on a show when he basically said he was, he was talking. He front he brought it all out. He said it started in South Carolina, where the slaves would run away 
and the quote unquote police would find them, they would beat them, sometimes kill them, and bring them back to the plantation. Mm. And, he, and he related it to the day. Like, why are so many black people afraid to leave their neighborhood? Because if you go outside your neighborhood, the first thing they say is, what you doing over here? Right. You know, you do you do you realize where you are? Mm-hmm. And and they escort you back to your black neighborhood because you don't belong over here. And then the, the conversation was uh, was had because people were talking about defunding the police. And right. then they was talking about when they say defund the police, they talking about getting rid of the police. They said, no, they're not talking about getting rid of the police. They're talking about uh, taking funds that are police are not using and put them in areas where they need to be worked. Like they, they need to be in the neighborhood. They need right. to be more active in the neighborhood. So they need to have these funds, you know to uh, help build programs in these neighborhoods where they can go and get to know these uh, neighbors or these people in these communities that they're supposed to be protected. Yeah, because I, I'm an advocate for you should work where you live in terms of police mm-hmm. because that one, it sets a level of accountability. Right. If I treat you wrong, I have to see you in the grocery store. Right. If I treat these kids wrong, I have to see you when we go to the Y or we playing. You, your child might play with my child. So I have to... I have to see you and be accountable because I have to look you in the face. Right. And then also on top of that, I need to learn the language. Yeah. So if I'm working in the streets, if I live in Kennesaw and I work in Southwest Atlanta and these kids start talking some, and I don't know what they're talking about, I'm getting nervous. So nine times out of 10, I'm going to react in a nervous state, which is going to wound up being a white police officer shooting a black kid. Mm-hmm. Because you didn't know the language. You didn't know what they were talking about. Because you don't live in a neighborhood and you don't know nothing about this neighborhood. You're just over here for the check. You're just doing it for the check. Mm. But we're going to take a break and we're going to come back and we got a lot that we're going to be talking about. I told you I was going to schedule you from <laughs> 3 to 5. From 3 to 5. I think I'm, I'm going to keep him in here till 6, y'all. He's going to stay hey, till 6. I'm here till you kick me out. Okay, well, he's going to be here tomorrow. I ain't talking tomorrow. He's going to fill in for me tomorrow. <laughs> I'm just going to be Sophia holding down right here. We are your radio. We're the home of the urban sound of pride here. We are your radio. We are your radio. We are the home of the urban sound of pride, baby. That was Khalees with milkshake, honey, baby. <laughs> baby, and y'all be worried about Cardi B and WAP, honey. They've been doing these songs. Lil' Kim did it. You know, who else? Who before Lil' Foxy Kim? Brown. Foxy Brown. She, she did it so much. Foxy Brown came here no more. <laughs> <laughs> I think they were sick of the thing in her ear. <laughs> they just shot it all in her ear, honey. She can't hear them. Bless her heart. Y'all check on us. <laughs> but I'm sitting here with my special guest today, the one and only Gordon, the commissioner. Yes, Conversations. Indeed. Yes, that podcast. How, uh, what made you want to do the podcast? Oh, I've, you did tell me your son. Well, it was the idea of your son. We had always played around with it because I, I, I'm a sports fanatic. And mm-hmm. long story short, uh, growing up, kids hate to read. I hated to read. My father found a way. He would do everything he could to. He would do everything he could to try to figure out like, what? How can I get this damn boy to read mm-hmm. something? Mm-hmm. So what he wound up doing because I was playing sports, he would give me the sports page. Mm. And so growing up playing basketball, playing football, all this stuff, I would see some of the people that I knew in the sports page, and right. I would continue to read. I would go further and read. And it just became the fact that I knew damn near everything about everybody. So when I watched ESPN, all these big time Fox, I would sit there and I was like, he ain't watched no game. <laughs> he don't know what the hell he's talking about. He he just listening to whoever, whatever they told him to say, he just saying it. Okay. And so my son would always say, well, why don't you just start a show? Well, why don't, because everybody, everybody thinks that radio is just simple. Why don't you just go to your boss and tell him uh, mm. you can do it? Right. It don't work that way. So I just once quarantine hit, I was able to just go ahead and start my own thing and do what I wanted to do. And I've been getting a pretty positive response because a lot of people that listen to the show, mm-hmm. they'll send me. Te- I can always tell when people are listening because people send me a text message. Oh, I didn't know that such and such. I didn't know that that was happening. I didn't know about this guy. And I was like, I, I appreciate it. And we are getting into different conversations. Because when I was listening, especially last night, because I listened to the whole show from this week, is that this week's broadcast? Right. I listened to the whole show. And then at the beginning, I was like, I was listening, and I was like, go and turn that damn music off. <laughs> and I listened, I'm like, turn that damn music off. 
And then because you have a way of delivering it where it's just it's just not over your head, you just talking, you're just having a conversation. Right. And it I, I moved from turn that damn music off to like, oh, this is an interesting conversation. Oh, okay, okay. And then you got to talking about this and talking about that and talking about this and talking about that. I was like, oh, okay. I said, like, God know what he's talking about. He ain't really in this thing. And I was like, okay. And I had forgot all about the music. And then it's just like the music is still playing right. <laughs> at the end of the show. I was like, oh, the music was still playing. Yep. And them, them sponsors, I need that whiskey sponsor. Who is he? <laughs> hey, I could I should have brought I, I will bring you a bottle of Greenwood whiskey. Mm. I would definitely do that. Cause yeah. that's uh some friends of mine and they I they pay they they oh, are no. legit sponsor. They're a legit sponsor. They pay for for their advertising, but they are a, a black owned whiskey business. Mm. And they started about a few a few years ago in Oklahoma. And what they did was they had been trying to find a proper distillery. And my friend, he would come to me and say, hey, we, you know, we found this guy. Try this. And I'm like, mm-mm, that ain't it. Nah, <laughs> that's, you know, I'm, I'm, my mouth is on fire over here. <laughs> so he would he'd go back and they'd find a new guy. And so finally, probably about, probably about a year and a half ago, he came up. He said he showed me a bottle. He showed me, uh, he brought me, he, said, he just gave me a bottle, the whole thing. He said, try it out. And I sat down and I started drinking and I'm just sipping. And I was like, I'm feeling good. It's not strong. <laughs> it's smooth. Mm. And I'm not falling down all over. You know how you see some all this old stuff? You're not falling down all over yourself. You can just sit there. You can watch a game, watch a show, watch a movie, and just sip on it. Oh, but y'all y'all ask a lot of people out because honey, a lot of people they don't want the whiskey if they gonna make if they gonna make them pee on themselves. <laughs> you get drunk and start slurring the pee. Right. You say, "Oh, I don't want that good. That's a little, uh-uh, I don't want that little weak." Nah, but it's some but good no, stuff. It's good. Yeah, it's you definitely. Like it? I'll bring you a bottle. I, uh, matter of fact. We will make an appointment for uh, me to come back. That's how you're going to bring me back. I know you'll bring me back because I'm breaking the bar. Oh, uh, we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to take a break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about, you know, some other things that's going on in the news because there's a lot going on in the news. It certainly is. Especially with these uh, police killings and stuff. We touched on it earlier, honey, but I just want to get your take on what's really going on Definitely. with this uh, black men being killed by these white police officers in the state of black America today. Right. I'm your girlfriend, Sophia, holding it down right here at Club Chit Chat on We Are You Radio. We Are You Radio with the home, the urban sound of pride. My special guest today is the one and only Commissioner Gordon. Check this out. We got a great show coming your way today. Hey, everybody, get it. Morning, crew. Get ready. Get ready. Get ready for the We Are You Morning Crew. Monday through Friday, 6 to 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Provocative and insightful, sometimes polarizing and irreverent, but always raw, real, and funny. We say the stuff you want to say, because we are you. The We Are You Morning Crew. Radio. We're the home of the urban sound of pride, baby. I'm sitting in here at Club Chit Chat with my special guest, Gordon, the commissioner, honey. Yes, the commissioner conversation. Hey, Gordon. How you doing? Just listen to Gypsy Woman. We were just talking about the Gypsy Woman, honey, and Diddy. <laughs> <laughs> that was Crystal Waters with Gypsy Woman, honey. But I was talking about before the last break, you know, everything that's going on with, you know, black officers, I mean, the black men in the being killed by these white police officers and everything. And then just the state of black America today. A lot of black people don't want to take the vaccination because of the Tuskegee study and all of that stuff. What what do you take on uh, all this going on in the world today? Well, in part, first I'll start with the vaccination. The vaccination to me, it, it feels rushed. That's, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's For the most part is what I'll say. It feels rushed. That's my reluctance to take it. Mm-hmm. I, I get it. We all want to get back in the world. We want everything to be back to early 2020 to 2019. We want everything to be back where it was. We were all outside having fun, a great time, Mm -hmm. all that stuff. But we have to, we have to really do our due diligence in terms of what we're putting into our bodies. And for them to just turn around after a couple months and say, Hey, take this and you should be okay. I have to question that sometimes because I mean, we still haven't done a lot enough research. Right. There, there has, it can't be enough research. So essentially, we are the research. Mm-hmm. We're the guinea pig. Right. So, so you haven't taken the vaccination. I have not. And you don't plan on taking it. Uh, no time soon. I, 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 we can, I, we can talk about it on the second go around. On the second, uh, 
<laughs> when they, they give you the vaccine 2.0. <laughs> <laughs> but listen, and it's just like, you know, at first I was just like, when they came out with the vaccine, I was the same. I was like, I'm going to take it. I don't care. I'm taking it. I'm taking it. And then as we started getting further and further down the road, and then all the people said, like, no, honey, you know, they, they're Tuskegee Airmen, honey. I'm not going to go through that child. They didn't, you know, you shot them in with that syphilis and then tell them and blah, blah, blah. And no, and white folks, they have a way. Uh-uh, I don't trust white people. No, 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 no. I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing it. So then I started like, oh, I mean, hold on. I mean, you know. So then it's just like, you know, as time went on, I'm like, yeah, you know, I, we need to, I need to go on and take it because, you know, bottom line is, if you don't take it, like one of the one of my guests told me, she said, I feel like this. If I don't take it and I get sick, they're going to give it to me anyway. So why not just take it willingly? True. But then a lot of people, like you said, a lot of people question it because they're saying that, you know, they haven't done enough research on it. Then all of a sudden they come up with this. And a lot of people say they're not taking it because they want to take, like, I only do natural medicines. I'm not fixed to do nothing. This is man-made. I'm not fixed to let them put this in my body. I don't know how my body is going to react to it. So I understand. Well, my parents both have taken it, and my father, uh, a veteran, he, you know, they they kind of kind of put that on you when you go. Like one of the options they give you, you know, you one of the first in line to do it when you go to the uh, to the VA. Okay. Uh, and so he took his first, and then after he took his, he encouraged my mother to take to take it, and she she went down fighting, but she went on ahead and got it also because she was tired of hearing his mouth. Okay. So. Uh, but they have it, and 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 they're doing well. They're doing fine. But then you hear these horror stories. I think they 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 take the Johnson and Johnson one off. All yeah, they totally. put it on hold right now. They yeah, put it on hold because they said that even in the research when they was doing the Johnson and Johnson, that a couple of people got the blood clot. But then they said that you know, okay, it was a, a, a minimum. It wasn't like it was a right. whole lot of people. It was just like a couple of people. But they did say one person died from it. You know, the blood clot. But, uh, yeah, they done put Johnson & Johnson on hold. So it's fiber, Pfizer, and, and Moderna. Moderna. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody's taking that. But I thought they said that Morehouse was working on one. Mm-hmm. They well, said that Morehouse was working on them. Well, and that's the thing. That, 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 that furthers me in my reluctance because what they're doing is they're putting black faces on it to make black people feel comfortable. Mm-hmm. Like, look. Leroy did it. Don't you, you know. They're doing a good job. <laughs> I got my Don't first. you want to go get it? I went and got my first shot. I'm due to get my second one on uh, the fourth of next month. But then somebody else, because a lot of people are talking about even that one over there told me, that CEO, that one over there, <laughs> he told me, oh, your arm going to be sore. And nah, 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 yeah, your arm going to be sore. And then it's just like when I went to the shot, my arm didn't start getting sore until like four or five hours after I got the shot. Then the next day, it's just like by 8 p.m., it was just like the sore that was gone. And I didn't have... I didn't have no issue. And uh, I told somebody, I said, yeah, I said, I didn't have no problem. I said, I don't know what it is about me. I said, but I didn't have no problem because when I took my shot, I was back effing up honey buns <laughs> and soda water. <laughs> so I had no problem. But then another friend of mine told me that, you know, and I just talked to him last night. He said that he took the first one. He didn't have any problem. Then he took the second one. He said, I went to work. He said, I will late. I told him, I said, I'm coming to work, but I'm going to be an hour late because I took my second vaccination. So then it's like, I went to work. And I did. He said, I was there. He said, about four hours while I was at work. He said, all of a sudden, I just started mm. just getting sleepy and dozed out. He said, they can look at me on the camera. Honey. He said, I'm just, I'm just laying on the keyboard. <laughs> I said, oh, my God. Well, one of my mother's friends said that, too. She said, uh, and she's an elderly woman, but she she said she took the second one. And she's like, I got the best sleep I ever had in my in my life, <laughs> I don't know how good that is <laughs> that you that you say that. Sleep. Right, you were damn near dead. <laughs> but, oh, but we're gonna take a break. But we're gonna come back and during the happy hour, happy hour is where we gonna drink on, gonna smoke on, get a pills on, get everything on because everything is legal at happy hour club. Chit chat happy hour. Okay, and then we do the birthday. But you have a story. Yes, that you want to share. About you recently being pulled over by the police. Well, not right now. Not right now. We're going to come back. When we come back the next break, Warren, the commissioner, (laughs) is going to share his story that he recently was pulled over by the police. We're going to experience this with the commissioner. The commissioner speaks at Club Chit Chat's happy hour. Wow. Full of risks. All right, welcome to Club Chit Chat's Happy Hour, everybody. Where we get a drink on, get a smoke on, get a pills on, get a freak on, because everything is legal right here at Club Chit Chat during our happy hour. You are listening to Bruno Mars and Anderson Park, Silk Sonic. Leave the door open, baby. Everybody's doing that song. Right. 
Yeah, now nah, the drag queens are doing it. Oh, really? They, yes. uh, they're covering up. The- they are doing Lead the Door Open by Bruno Mars, the drag queens, in full drag, up here doing this song by this male artist. But y'all paying them. Hey, I see all the TikToks, all the everybody doing the little song. They 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 got it going. Mm-hmm. They got a hit on the hand. Yes, yeah, honey. Bruno. Come on, Bruno. Bruno, you know, we usually do the birthdays during the first break, but we let you have the first break during your story. The commissioner. Yes. Gordon is here. The commissioner's conversation. That's the name of his podcast. Y'all need to follow him. You tell him tell him again. Check it out. Apple Apple Podcast, Spotify. Mm-hmm. We are on every podcast streaming platform. Mm -hmm. So if you're on a podcast streaming platform, type in the Commissioner's Conversation and it'll pop up. Also, if you're on YouTube, type in the Commissioner's Conversation. Once again, I will pop up and I'll be interviewing somebody random. Mm -hmm. And we're usually talking about sports or something close to that related. Mm -hmm. Something that's in the news. Right. Topical. But uh, I need all your fans that's following you. I need to, uh, you to let them know that they need to subscribe to my uh, OnlyFans page. OnlyFans? You got OnlyFans yeah. going? Yes. Yes, I got my OnlyFans going, honey. And this week it's going to be me and I think my the person I'm doing it with is T.I. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing it with T.I.? I know you're talking about them. Uh, <laughs> this is birthday. This is birthday. You're talking about some pills. You might want to. No, I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm leave you. Oh, let me just say, I've already had an experience with T.I. and Tiny Honey and all these people. Y'all, let me tell y'all something. Y'all better stop messing up my money. Because I don't have a problem with it. <laughs> you know, they let you know up front what the deal, what the deal is. Was. Please don't mess up my money. And that's the crazy thing about that situation, too. <laughs> When you talk about how we we said that people go back to us, and so the second time I went back, he gave me <laughs> what? But we have to be careful because you know we have some legitimate victims out here, honey. We just making light of the situation, right. honey. But it's time for us to do the birthday, so let's just leave that alone. Leave that alone, God. Leave it alone. <laughs> Don't you dare touch it again. Leave it alone. You do the birthdays. I always let my guests do the birthdays. He over there reading the names. No, just read. <laughs> He going over them names. Right. right. <laughs> so, let me see. Now, you done dropped the, you done dropped the son off at school to take the test. Let me see if your ass needs to go to school. <laughs> <laughs> Can you read these names? Whose birthday is it? Today, mm-hmm. it is Marshawn Lynch's birthday. He turns 35. He look older than 35. Yeah, he He's does. a beast on that football field, though. And it is also Jack Nicholson's birthday. He is 84. Check on him. Please. He probably, Please. He probably with Prince Phillips. It is also Sherry Shepard's birthday. She is 54. I Check thought she on. might have been older than 54. No, nah, her shape is, though. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then gospel singer Jacqueline Carr. She is 24. Oh, what's her name? Jacqueline. Mm-mm. It's not it? Mm-mm. I'm not familiar with her. What is her? How do you say it? It's Jacqueline. Huh? Jacqueline. Jacqueline. Oh, see, and you talking Jacqueline. about me. I love her, honey. We played her music, you know, earlier. It was like, if you want it, you can ah, have it. Jacqueline. I'm sorry, Jacqueline. Mm-hmm. I apologize. Jacqueline Carr, she's 24 today. Right. Also, James Ross is 33. James Ross. James Ross. Who was James Ross? I don't know, but you have him on the page. Let me see. James <laughs> Ross. You I put a little description what they do. James Ross. James Ross. There it is right there. You see it on the side. What else does it say? He was on RuPaul's Drag Race. Oh, uh, RuPaul's Drag Race, Tyra along Sanchez. with Tyra Sanchez. Yes. Oh, that's no, his. That's, that's the. His... A, oh, the alias. Okay. Tyra Sanchez. Tyra Sanchez, aka mm-hmm. James Ross, who was thirty three. She was in the news recently. Was it recently? Yeah, she had spray painted on, <laughs> spray painted on a building, an apartment building. Oh my goodness. She was having issues with her landlord, so she went outside and spray painted on the apartment building. Don't move here. <laughs> <laughs> that's the way to handle it. Yes. Yeah. That's how you want to take care of it. Mm. But also, you talked about Ti. Ti had a, a mixtape series with one DJ Drama. Mm-hmm. DJ Drama celebrating his birthday. He today. is forty three. Mm. Rapper uh, Mano. Mano is fifty one. Mm-hmm. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. Now you know. He seems like he's younger than that. Yeah. That's because he ain't doing all that smoking and drinking and stuff. Right. He just out there making that paper. Yeah. I thought Mano was. Mm. How about that? You learn something new. Every day. Cool. Is that how you say this? K-O-H-H? He's 31. Oh, yeah. The rapper. Cool? Cool? Yeah. I don't know who Cool is. Oh, I don't either. He was just in there. 
Unless it's a D, it's a DJ cool, but, but he wouldn't be thirty one. He's older than that. That mm. would be to let me clear my throat, but he wouldn't be that. Oh yeah. Well, moving to the NFL, Matt Jones is thirty eight. Mm hmm. Freeman McNeil is sixty two. Mm hmm. Hall of Fame of Freeman McNeil, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. Marlon Brown is thirty. Mm-hmm. Kenny Steele is twenty nine. Mm-hmm. Isaac Rochelle is twenty six. Mm, sound like a sissy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brad Banks is forty one. Miss Rochelle. Mm hmm. <laughs> In the NBA, Harry Giles is 23. Sound like he got gouts. <laughs> <laughs> Bimbo Coles from Syracuse, mm-hmm. 53 years old. Spencer Haywood is 72. Mm-hmm. Dante Cunningham is 34. Mm-hmm. Shelvin Mack, former Atlanta Hawk, is 31. Mm-hmm. Dewan Blair is 30, 32. Mm-hmm. And Really, Byron Allen's birthday is today. Yeah. He is 60. Doesn't Byron Allen own, like, the Weather Channel now? Yes. Byron Allen got that good money now. I remember Byron Allen used to do, like, the infomercials and stuff. Like, he he would do, he had his show, mm-hmm. and he had, like, did his own stuff. He was doing his own, uh, right. he was doing his own commercials. 60 years old. Congratulations, mm-hmm. Byron Allen. Producer John John Robinson mm-hmm. is 51. He's from TLC and Diana Ross. He's done work with them. Yeah. And then... <laughs> He said he's from TLC. Oh, he was part of TLC? He was a producer. Oh, okay. Uh, Runner English Gardner is 29. Uh-huh. Yeah, English Gardner. Oh, okay. He's 29. Who is that? You have that. They are a runner. I'm an English Gardner. I'm assuming a track star. <laughs> She's an Olympian. Track. English, English Gardner, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, you see, George, I've been giving y'all the birthdays <laughs> right before we do them. <laughs> y'all don't have time to read them. <laughs> me about it's a setup. It's a setup. He did tell me it's a setup. Maybe one time I had somebody here that was reading the birthdays, and they say that uh, it was, uh, <laughs> it was uh, what's his name? Childish Gambino. Oh, Donald Glover. Donald Glover. I said, it's Donald Glover. First, he said, oh, the day is Danny Glover's birthday. I said, they do not say <laughs> Danny Glover. He's about it. I said, he said, oh, Donald Big difference. Glover. He said, Donald Glover. Big I don't difference. know him. I don't know him. Then the person that brought him, that came with him to say, you do know him. I don't know him. They say, well, who uh, who uh, ringtone you have on your phone when it ring? That's Childish Gambino. They said, that's the same person. No, it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> But we celebrate birthdays, and you celebrate your birthday on behalf of me and my laughing hyenas, my wheel, your radio family, my laughing, <laughs> my mad and my behind, my divas, my occurs, my tinas, and my barbs. We want to wish you a happy birthday and many, many more from my wheel, your radio family, and the commissioner. The commissioner. Commissioner Gordon. We want to wish you a happy birthday and many, many more. Come on, BB. Let's ride. Gonna cut Janet off like I was telling Miss Thing. Huh, get out of here. Who was that early? I told her to get out of here. This is your girl, Mr. Fear, holding down right here. We are your radio. We are your radio. We're the home of the Urban Sound of Pride, baby. Yes, we are. Mm-hmm. That was Brandon with that song she do with Usher, huh? Yes, Speaking of Usher, we were talking about Usher, and he has a residency in Las Vegas, honey. And then I was telling everybody in the studio whether how, uh, well, first of all, the commissioner is here, Gordon. Say hi to the people, Gordon. Yes, indeed. How you doing? <laughs> Commissioner Gordon. Yes, he has a podcast. Y'all need to check him out, honey. But we were talking, and he was saying that. I said, oh, Usher has a residency in Las Vegas. He said, yeah. And I said, oh, I remember when they were trying to get Usher to do the residency in Las Vegas, and he said, that's for old people. He wasn't doing it. Baby, his mom was so mad at him. <laughs> she was so mad at him. He was missing out on them checks. Yes, and then Beyonce ended up doing it. So that's why Beyonce ended up doing it because Usher turned him down. And then so many artists have been there since Beyonce. And now I think Rihanna did. Didn't Rihanna do it? I think Rihanna did. I know uh Britney did one too, didn't Britney Spears yes. did one. Mm-hmm. So everybody doing so now Usher's going up there to get that old people money. <laughs> well, the funny thing about that was he was promoting it by throwing out the fake money. Remember that the strippers talking about Usher came in with the with the with the Usher bucks or whatever they called that was it. With Usher. The make- yeah, he had his own picture on like the hundred dollar bill. 
Right. I thought there was somebody else. No, that was just us. It was recent. It was like a couple weeks ago. Yeah, and they was trying to uh yeah, but that I was his of, that was his promotion for his residency. Usher. Okay. Yeah, because they were saying that, you know, they were saying that he tipped real good and that was just something that they used for promotion. But some girl had went on there and tried to put him on blast right. like he was just passing out that fake money, them fake hundred dollar bills. Like, girl, ain't nobody know that they know there wasn't no real money. <laughs> Got Usher pitch on there. Biggest day, honey. You know that ain't no real money, honey. But uh I'm gonna thank you for coming and joining me here I appreciate at you. Club Chit Chat. And I talked to God and I told him I want to come in here and talk to sports with me every day. I said, You he ain't gonna come every day but you know he does his podcast you know say it again commissioner's conversation comes out every wednesday so i record it tuesday night it's uploaded on wherever you stream your podcast every wednesday you can also check me out on youtube the commissioner's conversation or you can check me out on instagram at the dot commissioner dot gordon mm-hmm. and he breaks it down you don't have to worry about what is he talking about what is he talking about because like i said I listened to the latest podcast, and he was talking about the NBA and how they having this. What they calling it? It's the play-in tournament. The play-in tournament. Right. And usually they have, when they get ready for the playoffs, they have like the uh, number one through number eight seeds, and that's who's going to be in it. But now this year, they done added the ninth and tenth seeded teams in there. Number seven plays number eight. Right. And whoever wins out of the seven and eights, that person would be the seventh seed. Right. And then number nine plays number 10. And whoever wins out of nine and 10, they will play the loser out of seven and eight. And whoever wins that game, then they will be the eighth seed. Right. Exactly. Yes. See, you broke it down for me because I understand because when you first said it, I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> I'm like, what? And, what? And that's why I said it twice because I know if – if you're not, pay, not even really if you're not paying attention, but if you're not used to it, because this is the first year. Mm-hmm. And they tried something similar last year in the bubble, and it made for good t- it made for good TV drama because they had teams like the Phoenix Suns, you had teams like the Portland Trail Blazers, who everybody had counted out. All right. of a sudden, they were making noise, and they wound up in the playoffs. Right, and then it's just like you said, honey. It was just like uh, a lot of a lot of a lot of a lot of this is luck. Right. A lot of this is just luck because you don't know when a person, when a player is going to get injured. You don't know when a person get injured. You don't know how long they're going to be out. And then if that's the backbone of your team, if that's like the Le- LeBron James, because LeBron Le- James Le- and what's Le- called, they out injured out. right Anthony now. Anthony Davis is actually te- is slated to come back today. So he's been out for quite a while. He's slated to come back today. But if you follow Anthony Davis, you know he's very injury prone. So he could be back today and then his, knee or his ankle could be hurt tomorrow and he would be out for another three weeks. But he wasn't like that when he was with New Orleans. He wasn't being injured when he was with New Orleans. A little. Mm. <laughs> but I think a lot of people are use, are saying that they're using this as rest. Right. Because if you look at last year... And they year, do. What wound up happening last year, remember when we all went to quarantine, basketball shut down for about a month or two. Mm. Well, it was and longer they, than that, well, huh? Yeah, it was a little longer than that. They, and then they brought it back in the bubble. In the bubble. Mm-hmm. And they said that gave LeBron and Anthony Davis that energy to carry it on through the championship. And also, it was like they were trying to win that for Kobe Bryant. And they and they had promised, they almost promised to win for Kobe Bryant. Because mm-hmm. LeBron gave a long, drawn-out speech, and he was crying all at the, at the stuff. So he, he kind of put it on his back. And now I remember when Laker fans couldn't stand LeBron James. Now you can't say nothing bad about him. Mm-hmm. At all. But not only that, remember when he left Cleveland the first time, they went to burning his jerseys right. and all that, then they welcomed him back, and then he came back and won some championships, then said, like, I'm out again. And see, that's why you can't get too emotional into it, because like you said, he left Cleveland, and they had a big thing. Even the owner of the team put out this long, drawn-out message about how he wasn't, he wasn't this and he wasn't that, and Cleveland would win before he won. And that didn't happen. Mm-mm. Miami won. <laughs> he went to Miami and they won <laughs> too. And then he wound up coming back to Cleveland. And now the owner looks stupid because you want this money to come back. Because LeBron, they said LeBron, it was some crazy number. I don't remember what the number was. But they said he accounted for millions and millions of dollars in the Cleveland economy. But even that, even that, even when he went back to Cleveland, he took a, a reduction in salary because right. he wanted to play for his hometown. And he said he wanted to win a championship for them. And not only that, he also knew that the money that he was, you know, not going to make on his contract, his new deal, he was going to make that up in sales and, uh, right. you know. Jersey sales. Yes, and also uh, ads. At Nike, I mean, all 
that's why a lot of these uh these guys they don't mind some well some of them won't mind taking a, a reduction in pay to try to win this championship to try to get more players to come join them because they're going to make that money up in Nike they're going to make that money up in Gatorade and all mm-hmm. these other places so they ain't hurting for the money right but uh we getting ready to go overtime it's already it's like we're supposed to be playing two commercials I don't know are they going to play these two commercials at the bottom of the going to play <sighs> He don't know. He don't know. He, they probably not gonna play. Oh yeah, they not. Oh yeah, they gonna play because they numbered. Uh, they gonna play. Yes, we going over, child. But uh, I thank you, thank you. But I love. See that? That's why I won't go in and come in here because I know somebody. I finally have somebody that knows sports and I can talk sports with somebody oh, yeah. because if I want to talk about makeup and dresses and stuff, George is good. But if I want to talk sports, it's got to be Gordon. So I can't mess up the names. Gordon, George, Gordon, George, George, Gordon, Gordon, George, George, Gordon. Yeah. But um, (laughs) what else going on in sports? We're already late. So we may as well say a couple more minutes. Well, like Mm -hmm. I said, the NFL draft is coming up next Thursday. And that should be pretty interesting because everybody want to know who the Atlanta Falcons are going to take. And uh, Justin Fields. housekeeping. Justin Fields, one of the top quarterbacks, recently came out this morning and talked about how he was battling epilepsy and everybody had had no clue like he said he had been battling epilepsy since he was 5 years old he, and he he's been managing it mm. and to the point where we had no idea it runs it runs in his family he said uh, a family member had it, either his father or his mother had epilepsy and so that is something to kind of look out for i'm not sure whether NFL GMs are going to say okay this dude is great because he has epilepsy and been able to manage it or they're going to say, we don't want to fool with him because he has epilepsy and we're scared he's going to have a seizure on the side of the field. Right. And uh, I know what I was getting ready to say because you was talking about the uh, owners and stuff with LeBron, LeBron's left and the owner went and put out this long statement. They was burning his jersey and all that. And the problem that I have with stuff like that is the, with athletes. These athletes, they can go to work one day and then you go home and next day, you know, you up on social media, you find out you've been traded. Right. But when an athlete decides to just move on on their own, then y'all want to act like it's a different ball game. No, they're looking out for their well-being just like the owner's looking out for his well-being. <laughs> And that's what you have to do. You have to look at it like a job because that's basically what it is. Uh, there are times where you get uncomfortable at your job and you want to quit and you want to leave because a boss has made you feel a certain way, a manager has made you feel a certain way. Same thing goes with these NBA players, with the NFL players, that somebody can say something, make you feel uncomfortable, make you not want to be there, make you feel not appreciated. And then you look over at this other team and they say, hey, man, we need you and we'll pay you uh, 10% more, 20% more. And why shouldn't you be able to go there? Right. And you don't know these people's you don't know these people's story, honey, because some people like LeBron James, it was just like he wanted to move. It's just like, listen, my son wants to go to school in LA. So I want to move to LA because I don't want to just send my son to LA by himself. You know, so it's like, no. So they have different reasons for why they want to, you know, be traded or go to different places and everything. But these are grown people, honey. You can't tell grown people what to do, but don't get mad at them when they decide to do to you what you always do to them. Right. And the funny thing about that though, I always tell people LeBron actually tried to get Dwayne Wade and Chris Bosh to come to Cleveland. And they told you, like anybody else would tell you, hell no, I don't want to go to Cleveland. Like, there's nothing for us at Cleveland. Why wouldn't, if we're going to get together, why wouldn't we go to Miami? <laughs> right. Why the but, hell are we going to Cleveland? And then we're going to get out of here, but uh, I could talk to you all day about sports. Honey. Oh, my God, somebody else knows about sports, <laughs> so I can't do. But uh, Brooklyn, Brooklyn snuck up on them and, and put their team together. They did, and but it's kind of unraveling right now because Kevin Durant got hurt again. Mm. He he should be back uh, sometime this week, but they don't know. James Harden, they said he suffered a setback mm. because his hamstring is hurting. So the coach got up la- the other night and basically said, I don't know when he's coming back. Like, <laughs> Oh, my God. So I didn't know all this. <laughs> I was up in Orlando this past weekend. All this didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, KD Lord. came back, and in the first four minutes of the game, he bumped knees with somebody and was out Mm. and James Harden was trying to practice trying to get back they were saying he was about a week away and his hamstrings Mm. flared up again Lord Jesus so it's just Kyrie and the Lakers still like the Lakers they ain't gonna do the child's gonna be who is gonna be it but we'll see Milwaukee Milwaukee I I don't trust Milwaukee baby (laughs) 
Y'all gonna mess around. Y'all gonna mess around <laughs> and let Dallas or San Antonio or somebody come up in there. They're gonna mess around let the Clippers. Oh, the L.A. Clippers. You know, everybody oh, yeah. love beating up on the Clippers forever. The Clippers have always been the stepchild in L.A. They're gonna mess around and they're gonna win a championship. Isn't that what, what you call them play for? They, that left uh with Kawhi Leonard. Yeah. Kawhi Leonard and Paul George. Oh and they were roasting Paul George last year in the bubble because Paul George, he titled himself. Whenever you nickname yourself, mm-hmm. you know you in for it. He nicknamed himself Playoff P. <laughs> like he shows up in the playoffs and dominates, and then all he did was look stupid as he bricked the uh the shot off the side of the backboard when it was crunch time and they could have won the game and mm-hmm. could have moved on to the to the finals and he he looked Choke. terrible, yep. But uh, Kawhi Leonard, Kawhi Leonard, nobody thought that he would leave when they won that championship. They just thought he was going to stay there. In Toronto. Yeah. <laughs> and then he turned around and he said, oh, no, I'm out. And they was like, oh, my God. So if he win, if they win, that would be a story. Yep. And it's going to be some. It's going to be, it's going to be interesting. I promise that that's the thing about the NBA. It's, and for me, this is my uh soap opera a lot of people watch the story a lot of people watch uh <laughs> RuPaul's Drag Race <laughs> I just get ready to say the reality Queen TV show Sh- Queen Sugar this is that for me because you can't predict what happens like I, mm-hmm. I know a lot of people will say well it's scripted no it's not you a lot of times they do be cheating though well, now they there, do be cheap. There's an element of where you can say the referees or throw the flag. Or, oh no, it's or just do like stuff. I'm gonna tell you the reason I know they be cheating. Then we gonna get out of here because the supervisor's over there, honey. He gonna get me. <laughs> but the reason I say they be cheating because the Atlanta Dream, the girls, mm-hmm. they were in the playoffs. They were in the playoffs one year, and the Atlanta Dreams were dominating that year. They was supposed. It was set to win it. I remember. They, right, and they had. Uh, they had rented the uh, arena out to uh, the circus, Barnum and Bay. I, I remember this. And yeah. then it's just like if they had won that game, they were gonna be they gonna have to play the game in the uh, Phillips Arena. Right. And it's just like, but no, they already you know booked the circus here, so they can. And they threw that game away. You could tell they threw that game away. They're just throwing up bricks and stuff. It's like, girl, they are not playing like they normally play. They're giving this game away. And the reason they gave the game away because it's just like, listen, we got y'all gonna be in the playoffs. We don't know if you're gonna win the playoffs or that, but y'all supposed to win. But we can't take that chance. This circus gonna be here for like a whole month and a half. We <laughs> right. need all this money. We that's, can't mess this up. That's when the great Angel McCartry was here. Right. They cheated. But uh, thank you for coming in, Gordon. Thank you. Thank you, George, for coming in and record. Every time I have a guest, George has to come in here and record. So I want to thank both of you all. Also, I want to let you know the Cup Chit Chat Tap Hour is being brought to you by iCode Academy. You resolved to start a career this year, but you haven't done it yet. Now, iCode Academy can set you on a path to a life changing education all online from the comforts of wherever you are in nine months. You could be a certified medical coding expert and earn up to $60,000 a year. Call iCode Academy for information at 866-553-2928. That's 866-553-2928. Or go to iCodesAcademy.org. That's iCodes with an S, Academy.org. Listen, DJ Baker's getting ready to come in here, and he's going to play that raw, raunchy music that sometimes he lets slip through the cracks and it plays on my show. <laughs> the unedited version, honey. Yes, all the hottest uh, musical artists in the LGBTQI plus community in R&B and hip-hop, baby. So just stick around. 7 to 10, DJ Baker, he's going to be on the ones and twos. All right, Gordon, thank you. Where are you coming back? Thank you. I can... We'll set it up. I can be back Monday, I, whenever you want me. Okay. I don't know if you're going to be able to handle Monday show because uh, Flame Monroe is going to be my special guest on Monday. You may not know Flame Monroe, but all the people out there, they know Flame Monroe. She's my music. She's my special guest I, on Monday. I'm trusting George right now. George said, no. Oh, no. I need you to come in here with Flame. No, I need you to come Monday. Yeah, come Monday. I'm trusting George. George ain't been. Ain't, ain't uh, been uh, I need you here with Flame because, that, yeah, that's a balance. <laughs> that's a balance. I need you here talk about sports and everything. Yeah, come Monday. Come Monday. Monday. Get here around two, but you have to be two. Cause I get here two flying coming to three. She coming three to uh three to five or three to six. So you get here two. And I need you to Google Flame Monroe. Okay. So you'll see what you're coming into <laughs> okay. on Monday. And also on Wednesday, Wednesday, Queen Sheba. Queen Sheba will be here on Wednesday, but I'll tell you more about that next week, honey. But until then, I want you to be blessed, be a blessing, but more importantly, always be yourself because no one else could be you but you. They can only be a carbon copy of you, but a carbon copy is never better than the original. And you, my darling, laughing hyenas, my Maddie Mar, my Will Your Radio family, my Beehive, my Bars, my Divas, my Okurus, and my Tina's, you are all originals, okay? 
I'm so glad we had this time together just to sing a song and share a laugh or two. And before you ever know it, it comes a time for us to show it and we have to say to each other, so long. Bye, Commissioner. Goodbye. Everybody, you already know the deal. I'm out. <laughs>